Hi, and welcome to another WatchGeek video. Uh, before we move on with the video and the watch itself, I just wanted to let you know that, uh, like in all my other videos, since they're very long, 20 or 30 minutes, I always put a table of content down in the description. So if you're interested in a, a, a certain part of the video, especially when I'm doing tutorials, like if you're interested in a certain function of your watch, uh, just check out the description and uh, click on the function that you want. There are time codes that will take you directly to that part of the video. So you don't have to scroll through the video or watch the whole thing. And now back to the watch. Uh, today we'll be doing a review and a tutorial of a Casio GW6900, uh, which is a part of the 6900 line, one of the most successful uh, lines of Casio watches. But before I dive into this watch, I just wanted to say a few words about the 6900 line. Uh, it all started in 1995 when the DW6900 was introduced. It was an ordinary run-of-the-mill G-Shock, but because of the characteristical uh, 3i design, it became a design icon and even Casio admits that it's the best selling and uh, most recognizable design they ever did. And when you look at the sheer number of movies and TV shows that this watch has been featured on, it's really mind boggling. I mean, I just did a quick Google search in like 10 minutes and I came up with all these movies and all these TV shows and the characters wearing them. Uh, then you have uh, the celebrities. I mean, uh, Eminem, uh, Usher, Justin Bieber, even Selena Gomez in her latest video uh, is wearing one. So it's really a popular model. And uh, over the years, it has become a part of the pop, pop culture, should we say, uh, because it really has been featured in so many different ways in so many different uh, shows and movies and everything. And you can see why, because of this uh, three eyed design, it really has become iconic and very, very re recognizable. Now, uh, the reason uh, today you can actually have uh, four different models of this of this watch. So you have, like I said, the, the DW6900, which was introduced uh, in 1995. Uh, then after it came uh, this model, the GW6900. It was introduced in 2009. And these two share the same size, the difference is only in thickness, but this module was upgraded with the world time and uh, solar atomic technology. Uh, then after it, in 2013, uh, came the GDX6900. Uh, that watch was a normal battery operated watch, so it didn't have the technology of this, but it grew in size. So it's a part of their extra large collection and it's very large compared to the normal one. And then in 2014 came the GMDS6900, uh, uh, which is part of the S series and S stands for small. So it's a smaller version of the DW and the GW. So basically today you can get four different models and three different sizes. And the one that I went for is the GW. This is considered the cream of the crop, should we say. It's the top model with the most advanced technology and the biggest number of functions. But the reason why I chose this model uh, has nothing... I mean, yes, it's good to have a solar atomic and I love it before, because of that. But the reason why I chose this model over the others is not, is not only the technology. Uh, when the original 6900 came out, I fell in love with the design and I always uh, I always wanted one but because of my practical side should I say like uh, in many of my videos uh, you heard me say that I like things to be practical first and then everything else I just couldn't justify that these eyes on the regular DW6900 are used for practically nothing they're just used to count the running seconds like the one on the right here so i never could justify myself buying a watch that has half of its face obscured i mean half of its face used for basically nothing just as a gimmick so whenever i was close to buying one i would always pull out at the last second because it was against my nature if i can call it that way but uh, this model the gw69 solved that because as you can see the eyes actually serve a purpose and a function so yes the right one is still used to count the seconds but it's part of keeping up with the tradition of the original model to be in the same spirit but the left one and the middle one 
actually serve as indicators and I'll go into that uh, in detail when we move on to the tutorial and explaining of what what this watch uh, offers and what what it can do so uh, when it comes to the GW 69 like I said it's the same as the DW but it offers the solar atomic function and world time function and it has five alarms versus one on the on the original DW now uh, we'll move on uh, to show the functions and then we'll do the tutorial but before that I just wanted to say a few more th cool things that, that the GW has compared to the other ones uh, and these are the, like little details that you don't really uh, uh, see on photos and you realize them once you have the watch in your hands uh, the first thing that is so cool is that these solar panels that you can see on 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 the face actually give off uh, a slight purple tint uh, at certain angles and it really looks beautiful also as you can see these lines that share this segment of the these segments of solar panels uh, look like something from the Tron movie and that's another cool detail that I discovered uh, also uh, the the last thing that I like not the last but one of the one of the cool f features is that usually all these graphics and texts are printed on the face and then the glass is put over that over that but since this watch has solar panels the actual graphics are put on the crystal on the underside of the crystal and then you have the glass of the solar panels so what you you get I'll try to do it with the camera but in real life it's really cool and I'll put photos of it for sure but I'll just try to replicate it here see you get now you see the Tron lines that I explained and you get this hovering text effect that casts a shadow down onto the onto the solar panel and like I said in real life it looks even cooler so this watch unlike the normal uh, DW and the GDX and GMDS uh, has these quirks that like really differentiate it from from the others and another cool thing is that the screen really has a, co a high contrast uh, and I'm really thrilled with how this screen looks and also the digits have a slight uh, blue tint I don't know if, if the camera can catch it you can see it in the circle more than on the numbers but in real life they, they gave off a slight blue tint so like I said uh, so this watch is actually like full of details that you discover once you have it uh, because it's very hard to capture these in photos uh, in photos it looks just like a normal DW69 but once you get into detail and once you have it in your hands and you look closely you discover all these little things that actually make you like it even more okay so now we'll move on to the watch itself so when it comes to the functions like we said uh, you have the home screen then the next mode you go through uh, different modes with the mode button you have the world time you have the alarm and you have five alarms four and one snooze the hourly chime you have the stopwatch it's a 24 hour stopwatch and you have a 24 hour timer and you go back to the home screen and now uh, in the home screen uh, the watch displays the hours minutes seconds uh, day uh, date month and uh, you over here you have the DST setting now usually over here you would have the RCVD indicator meaning that you had a successful sync uh, the night before since this watch tries to sync uh, five times in the night but since it was in a room where I don't have the signal last night, I forgot to move it, uh, it didn't sync, so I don't have the RCVD displayed here. Uh, the other things that you can see, and it's what I mentioned about the eyes, is that, as you can see, they serve a purpose. And not only that, but I'll probably put a photo as well, is that the left eye is used for power options and power levels so as you can see you have the CHG low mid high and PS uh, the first four are used for battery level so you have high level medium low and charge uh, you want to keep the watch at high and medium because at those levels the watch uh, will operate with all its functions the automatic uh, sync the auto EL everything uh, if it drops to low it will shut off certain functions and if it gets to charge it will blink charge and 
all the other functions will be shut down except for timekeeping and you will have to charge it immediately because that means that it has a couple more days stored in the battery and the final thing that you have is this PS or power save uh, when that is on like it's indicated here uh, the watch will shut down the screen at 10 p.m. and it will remain like that until 6 a.m. or until you press any of the buttons and the middle eye is used for different functions so as you can see you have the mute which indicates that the mute function is on and when that is on uh, the watch doesn't make any any noise when you operate it you have the sig or the hourly chime you have the alarm which is on whenever any of the alarms is on you have the SNZ here uh, this uh, that indicates that the snooze alarm is on and you have the AEL automatic illumination that indicates that the automatic uh, full auto EL is on and this one has a full automatic uh, illumination which means that once you turn it on it will remain on indefinitely uh, because it has a solar panel so it knows when it's in the dark and when it's in the in the light so it won't activate the backlight unnecessarily and this is what uh, what you have in the main screen uh, the home screen okay so before we go into the adjusting of the watch uh, there are a couple more features that this watch has while in the home screen uh, if you press this button here the split reset you can see that now the watch instead of the day and date it displays the second time zone so this is also a dual time watch or a GMT watch and uh, depending on the time zone that you select in the world time that time zone is going to be displayed here so instead of the day you have the time zone name and this uh, in this instance is the Athens and you have the time displayed here so it's a cool feature and the only downside of this is that I wish they put a time swap feature so that you can swap this and this time when you're traveling but it doesn't so you have to do it manually by going into the world time and switching switching the time zone to your home time so this is how you uh, toggle between this by pressing the upper right button pressing the lower button gets you into the get screen uh, the get screen is the screen that displays when the last successful sync was and as you can see it was on April 28th at 3.02 a.m. and uh, this was uh, the night uh, two nights ago and also the thing that you can do while in this get screen is start the manual manual reception you started by pressing and holding uh, uh, this lower button and the watch will enter and now it's trying to receive and this RCVD indicator uh, means that it's trying to catch the signal this is the level of the signal now during the during the day at least where I live it's almost impossible to catch the signal so you have to do it in the night and you want it to be at L3 that is the most uh, the highest uh, level of signal and the most successful the highest successful uh, success rate uh, if you want you can check out my other video uh, where I uh, compared this and the three rangemen and I uh, I, I, I uh, this synced them to the correct time and then let them sync by themselves and correct the time and you can see it's a really fun video at least it was to me uh, I'll stop the reception because it will fail for sure by pressing this lower button again and now you stop the manual reception also when you try this the RCVD that was here from the successful scene from the night before will disappear while in the get screen you can also turn on and off the automatic reception by pressing and holding the adjust button and now as you can see the RC is on if I put it to off it will not try to to sync during the night uh, this is good if you live outside of the area of reception or if you travel to an area where there is no reception by turning this off you save the battery because the watch will keep trying for five times every night to catch the signal and if you know that it's impossible for it to catch the signal just turn it off and it will stop uh, it won't do it during the night we'll put it back to on because where I live I can get the signal pressing the adjust gets you back to the get screen and you en exit the, the get screen with the start stop okay so now let's set up the watch uh, to set up the watch you do it just like any other Casio watch you press and hold the adjust button and once you've entered the adjusting mode 
uh, you toggle between uh, the first thing that you have to select is your home time a uh, home home city or time zone and you toggle it uh, forwards and backwards with these two buttons so you can go uh, due east or due west once you select your time zone uh, you press the mode to go through different values and you can change these values with these two buttons so pressing the mode gets you to the DST setting or summer and winter time daylight savings time so you can put it to auto off or on if you live in an area where the signal uh, where you have the the reception uh, you should put it to auto because the atomic signal will correct the DST setting as well so when the watch when everyone has to move their clocks to the summer or winter time uh, this watch will do it automatically uh, pressing the mode goes uh, to the 24 hour selection so pressing the lower button you change it you can have a 12 hour display with AM PM indicator or a 24 hour display then uh, pressing the mode again you go to the seconds pressing this will reset the seconds if you do it before 30 seconds the minutes remain the same if you do it after 30 seconds the minutes will move one up then you have the minutes the hours the minutes a uh, year uh, month and date and you re you move these like I said with these two buttons the day is calculated automatically and pressing the mode you move to the key uh, this is how you activate uh, the key sound this is how you activate the mute function so if I toggle it here you will see the mute here just uh, the indicator went on so now the watch will not make any sign any sound when I operate the 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 buttons but we'll turn that off because I like to hear the watch operating and the next press of the mode button takes you to the light setting so here you can turn on or uh, you can change the duration of the backlight so this one this watch has two settings one and a half second which is uh, indicated by the one or three seconds which is indicated by the three pressing the mode again you move on to the power save so as you can see this power save is blinking so if you turn the power save of off and you uh, exit the adjusting screen uh, the power save indicator will be off and the watch will remain uh, the screen will remain on even during the night uh, we'll leave it on and pressing the mode goes back to the selecting selection of the home home time or home zone and pressing the adjusting but the adjust button exits the adjusting screen and now once you've set up the watch and once you change anything in this mode like the minutes the seconds the time zone or anything uh, the RCVD indicator indicator even if you had it before that will disappear because now the watch cannot be sure that it's showing the correct time because you manually changed it so uh, you will have to wait for the other night for the next night for it to catch the signal to have the RCVD signal here okay so now moving on uh, pressing the mode button you go to the world time function and uh, in in here you can scroll through different time zones uh, east and west and whichever uh, time zone you select here like I said will be displayed at the home time when you press the dual time function when you activate the dual time function by pressing the split reset and the other thing that you can do in this uh, mode except for the UTC is that as you can see each one of these has the DST turned on but you can turn it off or on and toggle it with the adjust button you just have to hold the adjust button and now the DST has been turned off for Paris and the time has been corrected accordingly so we'll put it back on so that's all when it comes to the world time function uh, the next is the alarm you have five alarms you go through the alarms with the start stop uh, or the lower right button so you have like we said four alarms plus a snooze alarm one two three four and the snooze is the SNZ you adjust the alarm yeah you toggle the alarm and you have the hourly chime uh, you toggle all of these on and off with the upper right button so pressing this as you can see it says on and the ALM is on so you can turn any of these alarms on so these are all off when the hyphens are showed here it means that it's off when you select the snooze alarm and you activate it the SNZ will also be on the ALM and the SNZ and the last thing that you have is the hourly chime if you turn that on it will show the SIG on which means that this watch will signal 
each full hour and as you can see you have the time displayed uh, here while you're in the alarm okay and go back to the alarm one and to to adjust the alarm like like this it will go off at midnight to adjust it you press and hold the adjust button and you adjust it just like you do the the normal time so you can go up and down for the hours pressing the mode will move to the minutes and that's it so now the, the alarm will go off at 259 pressing the adjust button exits the adjusting setting and that's it uh, the snooze alarm will go off and it will keep going off every five or ten minutes until you go into the alarm and uh, manually turn it off by pressing this button otherwise it will keep uh, snoozing keep, keep repeating itself it's for those people that have problems waking up in the morning I'm not one of them but just so you know you have the snooze alarm pressing the mode button moves to the stopwatch the stopwatch is a standard Casio 24-hour stopwatch you have the start stop reset and the reset is here not here like on many other Casio models which I love so you can start it you can measure a split time and the stopwatch keeps going you press uh, the split reset and the, the stopwatch has left off and you can do the first and second place you you press uh, the you have two runners one goes through the finish you press this button the other one goes through the finish you press this button and now you write down the first runner press the reset button shows you the time of the second runner and pressing it again resets the stopwatch and finally and and as you can see over here you have displayed the hours so it's a 24 hour stopwatch that shows hundreds of seconds for the whole 24 hours unlike some other basic g-shocks where uh, the hundreds are dropped because uh, then it shows hours minutes seconds and finally you have a 24 hour countdown timer and uh, you start it by by this and it starts from 2359 you can stop it and reset it you set it up just like the alarm and time pressing the adjust button and you can only change hours and minutes you cannot set it up up uh, down to a second so as you can see it can go up or down and uh, you exit with the adjust and the other thing that I don't like or I, I wish they did differently is that once you uh, once you set up the timer this here always displays and you start it always displays uh, what the timer was set for when I believe it would be more practical if they displayed the home time here so that once when, when you're using the timer you can also tell what the time is but it was their desi design decision I don't know why I would personally like it that way but what can you do and you can stop it and reset it once the timer gets to zero it will beep for I don't know 15 seconds or something and that's it and the final thing that I didn't do I didn't show you how to activate the automatic illumination first let's see the uh, AEL -A 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 but I will put a photo of how it looks in the dark because I don't know if I'll be able to display it here yeah it's pretty okay there so it's a pretty nice backlight it's not the LEDs like the on the newer G-Shocks but it's a traditional backlight which I prefer and as you can see it goes off and stays for three seconds and to activate it you just press and hold this button for three or more seconds and the AEL will be turned on the indicator will will indicate that it's that the automatic illumination is turned on so press and hold and there it just turned on the automatic illumination now we're in a well-lit room and if I do this like it's designed to work so that you put it on your wrist and you level the watch and then tilt it toward your face and it will activate now s since we're in a well-lit room it will not activate but if you if you put it in dark and do the same it will work so I'll just try to there it just went off went on so let's do it again there so it's a pretty cool feature but I personally always keep it off because when I drive the car in the night it keeps uh, going on <laughs> and it, it's kind of annoying and because this watch has a dedicated light button that has a nice G engraved which let's say the DW69 doesn't have 
it's really not a problem to find it and to press it so i i don't like the i don't use the the automatic illumination also one more thing that i wanted to know uh tell you is that the solar and it's uh it's the same for all solar models is that solar models have batch numbers on the back so that you can tell there as you can see it says 302a144f uh it means that uh the it's been built at 144th day of the f year and i'll put a picture uh where you can uh, decipher which years are a b c d e f so you can always date your g shock because when i bought it uh when i bought it uh i always had fear that it was stored somewhere for months and years maybe uh, until the battery got damaged but luckily it was just a couple of months old when i when i got it so uh, you can always check the age of your g-shock solar g-shock by looking at the batch number and one more thing that i wanted to mention is that when i decided to buy this watch it was impossible to get it here in europe and especially in croatia because it was all already sold off sold out and uh, like it was discontinued but in the states you could buy it on amazon but the price of the shipping and uh, the import charges was so high that it doubled it almost tripled the price of the watch so i at first i gave up but then a uh, fellow watch you seek for a member trscp uh, he uh, he offered to buy one and have it shipped to his US address and then repack it and send it to me to Croatia and he did that so I got it for a pretty good price I paid only the shipping that he charged me for so I was very pleased and uh, I would like to use this opportunity to thank him again for doing a great favor to me because without you man i wouldn't have this watch today and you should check his youtube channel because he does amazing things with g-shocks he like disassembles them and mods the leds the screens and everything when it comes to tech technical stuff he's like the black belt to my white belt if we can call it that way so anyways i hope you enjoyed the video if you did like and share also subscribe and until next video Bye.